Anybody who knows me knows I love leather. Leather is one of those magical pieces that no matter what you put on, the leather is just gonna, it's just gonna make it look a thousand times better. It's gonna make your outfit go from like a seven out of 10 to like a 19 out of 10. But one thing is, is not all leather is made equal. There are so many different factors to leather and there's so many different price points to leather. And some people, they just don't know the difference. Like why is one jacket $2,000 and another one $200? And in this video, I wanna show you guys everything you need to know when you're buying a leather jacket. Number one, which is the fit. And too many people overlook this. It doesn't matter if the jacket is made out of gold and lined with diamonds. If you have a jacket or any article of clothing that doesn't fit, then it's gonna look like you got it out of a donation bin or you got it from a hand-me-down from your uncle. So there are a few things that I look at. The first thing is the shoulders. This is the thing that you probably wanna look at the most because no one wants to alter this. Half the time it's not even possible. But this is really simple. Just make sure the shoulder bone ends where the shoulder stitching ends. If not, then it's gonna feel tight or feel loose. It's gonna be really uncomfortable. If not now, we wear it for like more than 10 minutes. The second thing I look at is the sleeve length. One thing you have to look at is if you lift your arm up, would more skin show than where your watch would end? If so, then it's too short. And when you have your arms down, does the sleeve go past your wrist and towards your thumb? If it's more than halfway in between those two, then I say it's too long. And the third thing I look at is the torso. And this is not as reliable because different types of jackets will have different types of lengths. But most jackets, especially just a regular bomber jacket, you should expect it to end where your front pocket will end. The third thing I like to look at is the armhole size. And this one is more of a designer choice more than a fit choice. But I like to have things that have a smaller armhole because it's gonna have an increased range of motion and you're gonna be moving around this jacket all day. So I would go for something that will allow that. It's gonna have way less of a generic off the rack regular jacket type of look and it's gonna look way more tailored it's gonna look a lot more custom made than any other type of jacket that's the thing you want to go for when you want to look a lot more polished and you want to make it look like you spent a lot more money on an outfit number two which is find out the source of the leather and i'll break this down to two categories one is what animal they come from and second is what part of the skin did it come from? And most these jackets, they're gonna be either goat or cow. I like goat leather because it's a lot softer and it's a lot easier to break in than cow, but also it's gonna be a lot easier to stain, at least from my experience. But also, what part of the skin did this leather come from? It'll determine how durable the leather is. When leather is being made, it's split into two parts, so the top half will be leather, the bottom half will be suede. The layers that are closer to the surface of the skin are the more durable parts to the leather. With the top half, there's full grain leather and there's genuine leather. The full grain is the outermost layer of the skin and it's also going to be the most durable and water resistant but it's also going to have all the scarring from the animal and it's not going to look as uniform. Genuine leather oddly enough is not as genuine as full grain leather. It will be processed and sometimes it will even have multiple layers bonded together but it's not as bad as most people think. And then there's suede, which is the bottom half. And I love suede because it's not as shiny and it's also super durable and super soft, but it's also the most delicate of them all. And then there's bonded leather, which I would say to avoid in general because bonded leather is just a bunch of leather strips put together to make one big strip. And sometimes it'll have synthetics mixed in it and it'll have a lot of processing and it'll be a lot weaker than actual leather. This is the leather you see at H&M or Zara. This is a leather that'll look worn out or ripped in no time. Number three, look at the little details. There's a lot of things to look at when it comes to leather jackets, but here are a few things that I like to look at. The first thing, which is the stitching. Make sure your stitching is consistent. Make sure it's going in one direction and also there's no loose threads and the stitching pattern is as small as possible. The smaller the stitching pattern is, usually means the more durable the stitch is. A lot of fast fashion brands, you see that the stitching will be inconsistent. You also see loose threads. This is already a sign that the jacket is not gonna hold up. The second thing I look at is the inside of the jacket. And I'll show you the inside of this jacket. The first thing I look at on the inside of a jacket is the lining. You can see the lining here is half flannel, half synthetic. Most jackets that are higher end, they use cotton or natural fibers. And most low end jackets, they'll use all synthetic. And there's nothing wrong using synthetic, but you see that most higher end jackets, they'll have a blend of natural and synthetics. Also, look at the patches, if there are any patches. Look at the label, just look at everything on the jacket. Higher end jackets, they'll take the time out to put extra detailing on the inside. The things that people don't even see because they just want to give people that luxury feel. Fast fashion brands or lower end designers, 
they usually don't do this type of stuff. I also look at the adjusters and you can see here, the sleeve alone on this jacket has a zip adjuster and also has snap buttons on the cuff. If your jacket is not ripped, then I would say to get adjusters on it. Not only does it look cool, it's also functional. You're not gonna be the same size all the time. And most higher end designers, they know this. So they'll make adjusters so you can increase the size or decrease the size of certain areas of the jacket. And also make sure your adjusters work because I've seen fast fashion brands like they'll have a belt on it, but they only have one belt loop. So you can't even adjust it or have the snap buttons and the snap button doesn't actually snap off. It's just stuck on there. It's just a fake button. I also get the underarm to see if it has the underarm vents. And this is something that I love to have on my jackets because leather jackets, they make you really hot. And especially in the armpit area, having these vents sometimes is the only thing that prevents me from becoming a pool of sweat. And it's also gonna make you feel a lot cooler overall. Also look at the zippers and the buttons. Make sure that the zippers, they go up and down smoothly, just like this. And also make sure the zippers aren't flimsy. Jackets usually have thicker buttons and thicker zippers. These are way more durable. And a lot of low-end designers, they like to use cheap zippers or cheap buttons that will either fall apart right away or they'll bend right away. And if your jacket has sewn-in buttons, then make sure it has a backing button. The outside of the jacket just has its regular buttons. But instead of it being sewn onto the jacket itself, the buttons are sewn on to another button. This is a lot more durable and it's gonna make sure your buttons stay on a lot longer. Number four, which is don't let the price dictate your purchase. And what I mean by this is, don't think that a $2,000 jacket is gonna be a lot better than a $400 one. There's only so much they could do with a jacket where you have to consider, did they just mark it up because they could or because it's actually a better jacket or a more durable jacket? And this goes both ways because I've made the mistake of buying sale items just because they're sale and I overlooked so many key things that if I gave myself a little bit more time to look at it, I would never bought it. The great thing about leather jackets are they're mostly timeless designs, so you don't have to rush to buy it unless you really want it right now. What I like to do is I like to bookmark certain jackets. I like to see if they go on sale or I check the next season or the next year to see if that same jacket will come back. Another thing is, is you could buy the jacket used and I personally don't have a problem with that. I bought used jackets before and nothing bad happened to me. And my final tip, which is make sure you know how to take care of the leather. Make sure you put protectant on it. Make sure you condition it, wash it. You gotta treat it like your actual skin because the jacket is essentially skin. And if you don't feel comfortable with it, you can take it to a leather cleaner and they can take care of it for you. It's a lot cheaper than having to rebuy a jacket. But that was my list of things to look for to find in a perfect leather jacket. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to give this video a like and also be sure to subscribe. But I'll see you guys next time.